What's going on everybody? Mortem here, this time bringing you a build for Divinity Original Sin 2, the Definitive Edition. But first, just a couple things. Uh, there will be timestamps down below to help you navigate the video. Uh, there's also links to my Facebook, Twitter, all that stuff. But today I want to do something a little different and bring you guys a build focused kind of heavily around role playing, but essentially it is an archer necromancer who likes to hang back on the front lines, uh, use other people to his own gain, while making sure he himself is safe, and most of all, raising some dead. The outcast primarily focuses on necromancy. Most of what he does is to get at corpses so he can raise them and practice doing exactly that. He's going to embrace finding out that he's godwoken and finding out that he has a chance to become divine because he sees it as a way to further his dark arts as well as his personal gain, which is the other part of his personality. He's focused primarily on himself. So here's a bit of backstory to help kind of get you guys in the role-playing mood as well as kind of fill in some gaps in what this guy's about. The outcast chuckled to himself as he came upon the fresh corpse of an elf, murdered by its master somewhere from the camp, no doubt. Only hours prior, he was cast out from that exact camp for practicing his dark arts, but now it would seem they would be his salvation, his undead guard for the journey to come. He had been a loyal soldier to the Lizard Empire, training from the time he could hold the bow to stand among the rank and file. If only they'd known then his dark perversion, this gnawing feeling drawing him toward the stench of death. He always preferred the rear guard, rather let the stupid ones take the blows and make sure he's around to practice raising the dead at night while the forward camp would celebrate the victory. But all that was behind him now, tossed out, lucky to have his life. But what is life but death pending? And it's the death he's interested in. He had heard tales of Voidwoken swarming the human kingdoms, and death was sure to follow there. So off he went, ever chasing death, only to wind up collared by the Magisters for raising one measly corpse. Ironic to be in chains as a lizard. So the outcast is essentially all about himself. Um, everything he does is for personal gain. That said, he's more than willing to put up a front. That's actually kind of what he's used to. He's willing to pretend to be someone else for the sake of personal gain. He's willing to work with others for the sake of personal gain. But to that end, he always has a bow and he's always away from the danger. He lets other people take the hits. Um, he will help people if he knows that there's something in it for himself. And that is primarily what his focus is. In terms of dialogue, uh, just kind of always think about the options that suit you. Even if it's helping someone else, what do you get out of the situation? That's what he's looking for. Um, tags are definitely outlaw and soldier. Those are the things he knows, the things he's good at. He really enjoys raising the dead as well. So necromancy is a huge part of this, specifically for the role-playing purposes. Um, it actually also works pretty well with Archer. The only thing that doesn't synergize super well about it is that uh, necromancer actually heals you for some of the damage dealt to vitality so the best thing to do there is only give your points in necromancer that you actually need to get the skills because much beyond two or three points in it really isn't necessary all right guys so jumping into the rest of it uh our outcast is obviously a lizard uh, especially if you're doing this for role-playing reasons um he comes from the lizard empire that's a huge part of his backstory um, but from there let's talk about attributes skills all that stuff so our focus is primarily going to be uh, finesse and constitution. Um, you can put some in intelligence, especially if you want the uh, necromancer's uh, skills to actually scale because we're going to be using a lot of the ranged abilities there and a lot of that scales off intelligence. So finesse, intelligence, constitution because you want to live obviously and wits is actually great because it's going to give you crit chance which goes really well with finesse and using a bow. So you want to focus there. Um, what I recommend if you're going to do all four is do finesse and wits and then the next level intelligence constitution and kind of back and forth that way. Now when it comes to combat abilities, obviously we're focused on range. Um, he is not a frontline fighter. He, like, he prefers to be from the back and kind of command things and make sure that he himself is safe. Now from there you're going to pick up huntsman and necromancer. Um, I wouldn't recommend putting more than three into necromancer at the absolute most. Everything else needs to be dumped into Huntsman, and then if you have any left after that, you can start looking into uh, things like Defense or Warfare, as that will actually increase the damage on your uh, uh, Necromancer skills as well. Now, uh, Civil Abilities. This guy is uh, used to sneaking around, and he's not, willing, he's not afraid to steal some things. So, by all means, uh, Sneaking and Thievery are where I like to go with him. Uh, when it comes to Talents... 
Um, personally, I like to pick up Pet Pal, but that's not necessary if somebody in your party has it in general. Um, beyond that, uh, Comeback Kid is actually a great one. This will prevent you from dying uh, once per combat, basically. Um, if you get resurrected in combat, you can actually do this again, but seeing as you won't be dying a lot with this guy, that's not necessarily something you're going to want to take. Um, Elemental Ranger is not bad as well because you will be using a bow. You can use that one. Um, Savage Sword of Lage is uh, basically a must. Um, at some point in your playthrough, you need this, especially with uh, using intelligence-based uh, skills from the Necromancer tree to deal damage, such as Mosquito Swarm or Infect, uh, things like that. And that'll essentially give you your crit chance. So all those points you're putting into Wits, as well as the Huntsman stuff, um, and from your range skill, actually. All that's going to give you crit chance, and then this will share that with your necromancer skills. Um, Torture is not bad. Um, it's something you can use, especially if you're focused more on the bleeds and stuff from uh, necromancy. This will actually make sure that those hit every single time. Um, and especially if you're not using intelligence, this is a great way to make sure those bleeds still actually go through. Um, opportunist is a great one, but you don't need that because this guy won't be passing that many people all the time. Uh, Far Out Man is also an option as it will increase the range of your skills and scrolls. And then All Skilled Up is always great because it gives you extra combat and civil abilities. Um, you can also pick up Arrow Recovery if you're using a lot of special arrows. But those are where I would definitely look into putting our talents. Now, for our tags, Outlaw and Soldier are the ones you should be picking at character creation because... He is an outlaw, uh, as he's been thrown out, and he has spent most of his life in the lizard's army. Um, so, soldier is definitely on the list there. Now, uh, going from there, our gear is largely going to be the finesse-based stuff. So, this is going to kind of give you mixed protection against physical and magic, but it's also going to give you uh, plus finesse, uh, plus huntsman, all your sneak stuff basically is what that's going to give you and that's important to this guy's character. So that's definitely where you're going to be there. Alright guys, so I'm going to run through the huntsman and necromancer skills real quick and basically share my thoughts on all of them and kind of give you some suggestions on which ones you should be using. Uh, starting with the huntsman stuff. Elemental arrowheads, pretty solid if you're looking to do some extra damage because this damage is pretty much always added on top of whatever your weapon's already doing you just have to keep in mind elemental resistances there's types where this won't be super useful first aid i would definitely pick up especially so you can help heal your tank if necessary ricochet is pretty good this really depends on the kind of fights you get into but there are situations where this is pretty awesome pin down is great especially if you want to keep somebody from moving reactive shot is awesome so this is basically opportun the opportunist talent except for your ranged guys so you should never put opportunist on a ranged character so reactive shot is kind of the uh, the skill based equivalent you pick an area and if anybody walks through it you'll shoot them barrage pretty good awesome it does a lot of extra damage especially if you're hitting somebody directly to the vitality tactical retreat is basically a must if you're playing a ranged build because you need the movement from this especially to gain the high ground quickly because that's where all your extra damage is ballistic shot. Eh, not really a huge fan. I mean, you can use it if you want, but it's not my favorite. Marksman's Fang, shoot arrow straight through enemies. This is awesome depending on your positioning. So this is a very tactical skill. Uh, Sky Shot's awesome because there's going to be times where there isn't high ground to gain. So Sky Shot will give you your high ground bonus without actually having to have the high ground. Glitter Dust, not really huge on it, but you know, it has its uses. Assassinate, uh, again, pretty awesome, especially if you're actually sneaking up to people. Assassinate is definitely has its place. Uh, your two source abilities, uh, well your three rather, Arrow Spray, Farsight, and Arrow Storm. Arrow Storm is awesome. This is definitely your heavy hitter for this build, uh, as I wouldn't recommend most of the Necromancer ones. Arrow Storm is great. Farsight, not a huge fan. Um, with you having the high ground most of the time, you're going to have a huge range, so it's just not necessary. Arrow Spray, again, it really just depends on the density of the people in front of you, so I'm not huge on it, but Arrow Storm is a must. So to quickly recap, First aid is a must. I would recommend ricochet and pin down. Uh, reactive shot is pretty good as well. Barrage is awesome. Tactical retreat is pretty much a must. I like marksman's fang and sky shot. And then assassinate and arrow storm are pretty awesome. Now, um, you probably won't be using all of those simply depending on your memory slots, but those are the ones I would recommend. So moving on to the necromancer skills. 
With necromancer stuff, we have to keep in mind this build isn't specifically meant to use the necromancer stuff. So that um, I mean, we're obviously like that's the role playing aspect of it. That's what we're intending. But a lot of this is more in line with uh, heavy melee guys. Um, so we kind of have to be pick and choosy. Like it, it works well if you do it correctly, as you'll see a little later. But we got to be a little choosy. So Bloodsucker doesn't do us any good. Um, Decaying Touch, again, doesn't do us any good because we'd have to be like right next to the character because it's a touch spell. Um, we're ranged. We don't need that. Uh, Mosquito Swarm is awesome, especially if you're putting anything into Intelligence because this will actually scale with that and then still do uh, damage directly to the Vitality. So that's awesome. Raise Bloated Corpse, uh, again, pretty much a must simply for the role playing. This is a huge part of the role playing part of the build, so I'd recommend it. Uh, Raining Blood, not really for us. Bone Cage isn't necessary because, again, we're ranged. We shouldn't be taking damage to begin with. Infect is pretty good, especially if you want to reduce characters' constitution and make them easier for one of your melee guys to take out, depending on your group comp. So Infect I would recommend. Uh, living on the Edge is awesome, again, especially if you want to help keep that tank alive. Um, you could actually replace First Aid with this, for instance, if you wanted, though First Aid is a little more versatile, so I like it. Death Wish, target character receives a percentage of their vitality as damage bonus. Um, this isn't really for us. This would be uh, more of a support type character. We're more focused on doing damage. Ray's Bone Widow, awesome. Love it. You should definitely get it, especially for the, the role-playing aspects of it. Shackles of Pain, uh, this one's touch and go. There are times it works well for this build and times it's like it's pointless because we're not taking any damage. So overall, I'd give it a pass, but it can be useful in certain situations if you're noticing that it's hard to get your ranger away from a certain enemy. So there's certain fights where that's going to be useful, but most of the time I'd give it a no. Uh, then we have Last Rites, uh, Sacrifice Yourself to Bring an Ally. So simply from a role-playing standpoint, this one isn't something you would ever want to do. So, like, uh, again, our whole roleplay point of this build is that we're all about ourselves. So we'd never sacri sacrifice ourselves to save literally anybody. Silencing Stare, uh, this is okay. I mean, it's more of a utility thing, so it's not really for us uh, for the most part, but as a skill, it's not too bad. Um, so coming down to the actual uh, source abilities, Black Shroud is pretty awesome. Um, it's actually not bad at all, especially if you're looking for some crowd control, plus it's a, it's a one action point ability. So if you have extra memory slots, this one is pretty good. Grasp of the Starved is real touch and go. Um, the only time you'd ever want this is if you were using like uh, Raining Blood, but we're not really using Raining Blood very often or you shouldn't really be. Now that said, if you're using another character who has Reign of Blood, such as a healer, for instance, um, like Necromancer healers are actually pretty good. Uh, if you mix Necromancer with Hydrosophist, uh, you can get a pretty good healer build out of that. So if that character is using Reign of Blood, you might consider picking up Grasp of the Star for that, just to kind of get your group to synergize a little bit. Bloodstorm is a cool ability, but it's not for us. And Totems of the Necromancer. Depending on your build, this can actually be pretty cool, but I would recommend capping your Necromancer at three rather than five. So if you want to put more investment into Necromancer simply to kind of play your way, Totems is a pretty awesome skill. So again, to go through all of those again real quick, just to kind of give you my recommendations. Bloodsucker, no. Decaying Touch, no. Mosquito Swarm, yes. Raised Wilded Corpse, yes. Bone Cage and Raining Blood, no. Infect, yes. Living on the Edge, maybe. Death Wish, no. Raised Bone Widow, yes. Shackles of Pain, maybe. Uh, Last Riots, definitely no. Silencing Stairs, maybe. Black Shroud, maybe. Grasp of the Starved, no. Bloodstorm, no. Totems of the Necromancer, maybe. So there you go, guys. There are my skill recommendations for you. And with that, I think we're pretty much down to the strategy. So if you couldn't kind of get what I was saying earlier, your goal with the Outcast is to hang back, let the stupid tanks take the damage, and you pick off the enemies. Everything you do role-playing wise should again be in your best interests. Uh, this is largely a role-playing focus, but I mean, honestly, it's just a good way to play the game if you're not super into the role-playing stuff. So that said, if you just like playing the game and you're not really into role-playing at all, this guy is actually just a really solid build in my testing, especially if you set him up with a battle mage, a knight, and a cleric, which is my recommendation on a group comp. And there you go, guys. There is the outcast. I hope you enjoy it. Let me know how you feel about it in the comments down below. Um, I've had a blast with it. Uh, I hope you guys do as well. I'd love to hear any feedback you have at all about it, but have a great day. Hope you stick around and subscribe.